News Talk 1070 KHMO presents On the Mark with Mark Hespin. News Talk 1070 KHMO presents On the Mark with Mark Hespin. On the Mark is powered by Cunis Country Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the tri-state area at 221 North 36th Street, Quincy. Faith, family, and giving back. That's Cunis Country. And now, here's Mark Hespin. Good morning, Tri-State, and wherever you may be listening on the News Talk 1070 KHMO app. This is On The Mark. I am Mark Hespin, brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. you got to ask them about that lifetime powertrain warranty, the no-fear warranty on new and used vehicles. Tell them Mark sent you. All right. Welcome on into episode 199 of On The Mark. God, that's crazy. It's a... It's a big number, a historic show next week, next Saturday, for the 200th episode as we will um, finish up our 2023-2024 NFL season predictions. If you're joining me here on Terrestrial Radio, thank you so much for making us a part of your morning as it's a wet morning across the Quincy Hannibal area as I'm broadcasting live here at our KHMO studios in Quincy, if you're joining us on the app, wherever you may be listening, you're amazing. Thank you so much for making us a part of your Saturday morning here with the free Cajun app. Or maybe you're joining us on the On The Mark Facebook live stream. That's great as well. You can always uh, find me in all three of those things right here uh, at the start of the show on Saturday mornings. I do want to mention you can hit me up on Twitter, on Instagram, at Mark Hespen, M-A-R-K-H-E-S-P-E-N. All right, I was just telling the Facebook Live audience before I joined you live here on the airwaves, man, oh, man, did I really want to start my show with Trey Lance and the trade because I think this is one of those things that will define the Niners in this generation of the San Francisco 49ers. What a massive, massive whiff by them. Uh, What it means for the Dallas Cowboys, I think it's one of the underrated things not as many people are talking about this morning and talking about Trey Lance. What does that mean for Dak Prescott? You know, the first time he throws a really bad interception. Uh, Lots and lots of fun with that storyline, but we'll save it for later. We'll start the show with our AFC West preview. We'll then go to our NFC West preview. We will then talk all things Trey Lance trade, wrap up the show with some college football and the Shohei Otani injury. Let's dive into it. Can't waste any more time. Got a ton to talk about. Hespin headline number one. Who's winning the AFC West? Hespin's headlines on the mark. All right. The AFC West, it is a division that has been dominated by one team, and that team resides in Kansas City, Missouri. And they have owned this division for the better part of the last decade. And I will just say this. I don't think we should overthink it. The Kansas City Chiefs, again, I'm predicting them to win the AFC West. This is, they are at that point now where there's just no reason to doubt them. There's just, there's just no reason to doubt that anyone else is going to come up and dethrone them from winning their division until we see it happen. Uh, with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, they have owned this division and I don't see it changing this year. Kelsey, uh, running back up by committee with Pacheco, uh, McKinnon, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, uh, a really, really strong offensive line. We'll hear a, a little audio on that here in just a second. Um, I will say, if if you're going to make me be picky about the Chiefs' def- uh, about the Chiefs team and where there are holes, and again, this is being really picky. What is the wide receiver depth? I mean, Marquez Valdez, Scantling. Sky Moore and, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. And he doesn't need the greatest wide receiver group, right? Because in Tom Brady's heyday, Peyton Manning's heyday, you make wide receivers better by, you know, playing with the best quarterback. But when you look at the weapons that the Broncos have when they're all healthy, when the Chargers have that they're all healthy, when the Raiders have that they're all healthy in the wide receiver room, they all three have much more talented wide receiver rooms than the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs have Travis Kelsey, who may be the greatest tight end in NFL history, still in his prime, very end of his prime, but I think you're going to still have a vintage Travis Kelsey year. That 
solves a lot of the weapons issues. But I get you need to pay the offensive line. You need to keep Travis Kelty health, happy and healthy. You have Patrick Mahomes. I would love to see the Kansas City Chiefs, though, go out there and find Patrick Mahomes, his, you know, Devontae Adams, in the sense that Aaron Rodgers at that point in his career, remember the Packers did a really good job of keeping his offensive lines great and then also finding him Jordy Nelson for a five-year stretch that led to Devontae Adams for a five-year stretch. I need the Chiefs to find that. You know, he had... Tyreek Hill to start his career. Now, where's that next guy? Where's that next guy coming from? Probably in the draft. Maybe, uh, you know, through a trade. But find Patrick Mahomes. Maybe midseason. Maybe they can work something out. But I'd love to see them add an elite wide receiver or someone who can be Patrick Mahomes' go-to in the wide receiver room. Maybe it is Sky Moore. Maybe he's a guy that uh, can develop that relationship with Patrick Mahomes and become a, a guaranteed thousand yard receiver, six seven touchdown guy that is uh, Mahomes' go to guy beyond Travis Kelsey. That if you're going to make me be picky, that would be it. I do want to uh, quickly play. This is some audio from the uh, head, the offensive line coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Heck. Shout out to our guy Bill Schuler here. He works at uh, Town Square Media. You heard him last night calling the Hannibal game and that brutal loss. Uh, to Helias on the road. A tough loss for Hannibal Pirates to start off the year. Um, but uh, he got this uh, audio from the Chiefs offensive line coach, Andy Heck, talking about the status of the Chief offensive line to start the year. Both Donovan and Juwan here. Uh, their talented tackles, their experience, and uh, in terms of how they've uh, fit in and, and adapted, I think very well. I mean, they're integrated right into our room. We've got a great room. Uh, the guys communicate well. Uh, they like each other. They like being around each other. Um, they, uh, in their own way, asserted themselves as leaders. Um, Donovan is a vocal guy, uh, a physical guy. We can, you know, draw a lot from his experience there. He's been a very rugged player over his career. Juwan, very talented, uh, does a nice job in pass protection. So I'm super pleased with those guys. Yeah, he was talking about Juwan Taylor. You missed it, kind of broke up there in the in the beginning. Juwan Taylor, the new right tackle, and then Donovan Smith, the left tackle. And that is one of the things that is, this Chiefs offensive line is very good. Juwan Taylor, Donovan Smith, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, solid at the right guard position. And so maybe I am, like I said, I'm being picky with the Chiefs. I'm being picky. I'd love to see them find the next Elite wide receiver weapon for Patrick Mahomes. Who that guy is. Maybe it is Sky Moore. Maybe they develop into that. Um, and then Chris Jones. Obviously, can you get Chris Jones back into the fold? Can you get Chris Jones back into the fold? Can he be, rejoin the team? Or can you go get a first-round pick for Chris Jones? And I know my Bears are out there lingering, and I've heard already Ryan Poles, the connection back to his hometown Chiefs. I see, I, I, I'll just say this, we're not talking about the NFC North and the Bears right now. I would love for the Bears to use one of next year's first round picks on getting Chris Jones. Because I, I truly believe that that is like when the 18 Bears went and got Khalil Mack. This is an all-in type, that would be an all-in type of move to go from worst to first when you still have your quarterback on a rookie deal. And you can get a guy, especially the defensive tackle position, I know he's older, 28, 29, you you can still be very good and elite at that position the way he plays for another two or three years, and that's worth investing a first-round pick if you feel like you can go all in. So what do the Chiefs do? The Chiefs need him, though, because otherwise on defense, you're relying a lot on Carl Loftus and some, and some other guys that you just don't know. Uh, I mean, beyond that, Derek Noddy, you know, Drew Tranquil, like a lot of a lot of unknowns on that Chiefs defense besides uh Chris Jones, especially um with the fact that you uh you know Frank Clark has moved on. All right, let's move on. I have the Chiefs number one in the AFC West. I have them at fourteen and three winning the AFC West. And number two in the AFC West, I have the uh, the uh, I almost said it, the Los Angeles Chargers. They belong in San Diego. The Los Angeles Chargers of Anaheim. <laughs> they, uh, 
I have the Chargers coming in at second in the division. I have them at 12 and 5. The Chargers are beyond probably the Eagles and the Niners. The Chargers have the most guys on the uh, uh, on their roster. Like when you're just naming guys that are like superstars, all-stars, all-pros, really really great football players, besides probably the Niners and the Eagles, they have the most guys. I mean, their wide receiver room is is when healthy, the best wide receiver room in the NFL um with Allen uh, Mike Williams, and now the new kid, Quentin Johnson, out of TCU, who just is really impressed in camp. Obviously, you have uh, Justin Herbert, uh, who is an absolute stud. Austin Eckler, who's a, a crazy, crazy elite weapon. They get their all-world tackle back, the third-year player out of Northwestern, Rashawn Slater. Remember, he missed basically all of that last year with an injury. Corey Lindsley, the center, Former Green Bay Packer, very, very good center, maybe the best in the NFL. And then on defense, Bosa, Khalil Mack, Derwin James, Asante Samuel Jr. This team is loaded. It is absolutely loaded. And they add Kellen Moore, which I think is a huge, huge offseason add for them. Offensively, I think the identity he will help give this team and allow Brandon Staley uh, the defensive head coach to focus a little bit more on just being the CEO, managing that defense, and doing everything he can to build off that playoff run last year. I think they absolutely do this. They they can't win the division because the Chiefs are in the division. And that stinks for the Chargers. But this is a very good Chargers team who I don't think anyone's going to want to see come that first round of the playoffs when you're a home team hosting uh, a wild card team in the Chargers, uh, 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 that's not going to be fun. It's going to motivate all of those division winners to want to get that one seed and avoid the Chargers in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Staley's the question mark. Brandon Staley is the question mark. The Chargers also have a very workable schedule. Very workable. Um, early, early winnable games at Minnesota, home against the Raiders, home against Dallas, uh, home against Chicago. And then in the back end of the season, some of their away games, very winnable. They're more talented than Green Bay on the road. They get Baltimore at home, more talented than New England on the road, more talented than Vegas on the road. They get Buffalo late at home, uh, Denver late on the road, and then maybe a matchup with Kansas City, depending on how all it shakes out for the division. I like the Chargers' schedule. It's workable for them for all the talent they have. I'll take the Chargers, two in the division, 12-5. and five. We move on. I'll take the Broncos to third place in the division in the AFC West, 8-9. and nine. Listen, the Broncos are a huge mystery team. If you tell me, if you if you were to all of a sudden a time traveler arrive in the studio and tell me, hey, I, I'm from six months from now, and the Broncos are actually really dang good and the Broncos uh, make the playoffs, I wouldn't be shocked because Sean Payton is that type of elite NFL head coach Russell Wilson had is one bad year away from still being an all pro NFL quarterback who everyone loves. And they have real talent. They've upgraded talent. I mean, Javante Williams, Shamaji P. Ryan at the running back position, an improved offensive line with Mike McGlinchey, Frank Clark on the defense, Randy Gregory on the defense. Um, I don't love the tight end room for the, uh, for the Broncos, but Sean Payne's one of those guys who always schemes guys open, especially in the tight end position. Um, Jerry Judy, obviously with the injury, not great, but they have talent. They have a, a much, much more improved coaching staff. That matters a ton just in the NFL. One of the reasons, though, why I think the Denver Broncos, besides the fact that um, I just don't trust Russell Wilson, and I don't know. I, I, I've lost so much trust after last year with him and this team. Their schedule is tough. Uh, they have to obviously go. They have a really, really tough six-game stretch here early in the season at Miami, at Chicago, home against the Jets, at Kansas City, home against Green Bay, at Kansas City. That is a brutal, brutal schedule to where they'd be lucky to find their way above 500 through that. Then they have a week nine by post by. They go have to go straight to Buffalo and then home against Minnesota, a playoff team last year, home against Cleveland in an improved Browns team. Then 
uh, to wrap up the year, it's very workable. I think they could stack some wins at the end of the year, home against New England, at the Raiders, home against the Chargers. There's a chance for them to make a late playoff push. But they have a really tough stretch of their schedule in the middle of it. I have the Broncos at 8 and 9, third in the division. Finally, fourth place and bottom of the division, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. Listen, obviously the Raiders, I think, are a team that has a lot of guys and a lot of talent. Offensive line really worries me, but obviously Jimmy G, uh, Josh Jacobs, the leading rusher from last year, uh, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, Marcus Peters, some real dudes, right? You can list off some guys. I do not trust their head coach, Josh McDaniels. I, I, I mean, he's, he hasn't won anywhere that he's been. He's underwhelmed, actually, everywhere that he's been. I, I just don't have a lot of faith in him. And the Raiders' schedule, they didn't get a lot of breaks. They got to start the season on the road, three of four games, at Denver, at Buffalo, at the Chargers. All tough matchups for them. And their one home game? It's against the Pittsburgh Steelers with that nasty front seven against their weaker offensive line and a Kenny Pickett that's looked very nice in the preseason. They all they have a winnable stretch there of some games at Chicago, home against the Giants, home against the Jets, uh, but then a really, really tough stretch with a late bye at Miami, home against Kansas City, bye, and then Minnesota, Chargers, Kansas City. Winnable games to wrap up the year at Indy and home against Denver. But I think it's too little too late for the Raiders and Josh McDaniels, who I, I don't think they can fire him because they just can't afford to pay a, a, a coach that they fired and then another head coach. Um, they're in, I think they're in a little bit of trouble, and the best thing the Raiders could do probably would be to find themselves into the top five to have a chance to get Caleb Williams, Drake May, quarterback of the future, and uh, improve that offensive line, re-sign Josh Jacobs, and and uh, work on the defense in the in the off season. Uh, they have pieces. I like the Raiders. Would it shock me if the Raiders found a way to win six, seven games? No, but I think they're much closer to a five win team than they are a six, seven win team. You're listening on the Mark News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app. When we come back, we'll dive into the NFC West. What do I think of the Niners? Where are the Seahawks at? Can they build off the playoff run? Are the Arizona Cardinals in full tank mode after some trades this week? And what do we feel about the uh, Rams only a little over a year removed from their Super Bowl victory? Matt Stafford healthy. Where do they fit into the picture in the NFC West? We'll get to all of that. It's on the mark. News Talk 1070 KHMO on the KHMO app. Need to update your furniture. And my show is the fastest growing conservative talk show and podcast in America. Our show is fast moving, hilarious, hard hitting, and comprehensive. We bring you all the news you need and all that deep background information you want to properly understand the news. And we're not afraid to ruffle feathers along the way. We'll fight corruption and character assassination, laugh at stupidity together because there's always enough stupidity to go around. And most of all, we'll fight for facts. Tune into the Ben Shapiro Show every day. Ben Shapiro, weeknights and Sundays on KHMO. 1070 KHMO. Welcome on back to On the Mark here in News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app. Brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. They are the buying center of the Tri-State. So if you're selling, they're buying. Tell them Mark sent you. All right. Welcome on back. We're going to break down the NFC West here in a second. I, I hate to do this. I... <laughs> I was just scrolling through my Facebook timeline here, checking in on the comments section on the Facebook Live. Thanks for joining us, whether you're on the air with us or uh, on the terrestrial radio on the Facebook Live. NBA on ESPN posted this last night, and it's it, this is mind-blowing. Five players have played 21 seasons in the NBA. Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowitzki, Vince Carter, Kevin Willis, and Robert Parrish. In their twenty in their twenty first season, none of them average more than seven points a game. Dirk averaged seven, Vince Carter averaged seven, Kevin Garnett averaged three points a game. LeBron is about to play his twenty first season. What will he average? He was twenty nine, eight, and seven last year. That's wild. Wild. And I know people say, well, LeBron is younger. He came straight from high school. So did KG. All right, so did KG. Also, 
by the time you get to your 21st season, that's enough mileage. I don't care if you're 38 versus 39 or 39 versus 40. The mileage on your tires. LeBron played so many playoff minutes and extra games and finals. It's, it's really like his 27th season. It's insane. That is a wild LeBron James stat. I'm sorry, I had to say something. That is a wild, wild LeBron James stat. All right, let's jump into it. Has been headline number two. Let's break down. I'm, I'm just, I'm just shook by that. The, uh, <laughs> the NFC West. Has been headlines on the mark. All right, let's jump into the NFC West, and I'm going to start like I've been doing all these breakdowns. I'm picking the winner of the NFC West, and I know I'm about to ruffle some feathers. But I believe in it. I'm going to stick by it. I'm putting myself out there on a limb. The Los Angeles Rams are going to win the NFC West this year. That's right. You heard it here first from me. I'm taking Matt Stafford. I'm taking Aaron Donald. I'm taking Sean Mickey McVay. And I'm taking the Rams to get back on top and win the NFC West. Um, obviously, this pick is fervently dependent on the fact that I believe that Matt Stafford, if he is healthy, with Sean McVay back, Cooper Cup back, Aaron Donald back, and a ton of youth on this roster. I like that they didn't sign old Odell Beckham, old Bobby Wagner. I like that they went and they got a a, a a absolute plethora of third and fourth and fifth round draft picks over the last year. And they are just winging it with a youth movement. I think this team is going to play fast. I think they're going to play with no expectations. I think Matt Stafford, the last time we saw him healthy with Cooper Cup, was thrown for 5,000 bleeping yards and leading his team to a win in the Super Bowl over Joey B. Burrow and the Bengals. I know I'm going on the limb, and I think there's going to be times where this Ram team looks unorganized, young, and they get beat defensively. But I think there's going to be times where this Rams offensive line improves. I think there's going to be times where Cam Akers and this Rams running attack improves. And I think there's going to be times with Van Jefferson, Cooper Cup, and a rejuvenated, healthy Matt Stafford show the league what they showed him two years ago when Matt Stafford arrived in Los Angeles And they're going to have pop moments. It's going to be an up and down season. But the schedule for the Rams, let's go to it, it's workable. Tough start. At Seattle, home against the Niners, at the Bengals. Uh, But then, they have a winnable game against Indianapolis. They get the Eagles at home. And then they have Cardinals, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Green Bay. I think that the Rams could easily, from October 1st, through November 5th with their bye week, the loss to the Eagles, but win that game against Indy, Arizona, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Green Bay, four-game win streak going into the bye, getting healthy, 5-1 and one in that stretch. The Rams will be over 500 going into their bye, and then post-bye, a very workable schedule, home against Seattle at Arizona, home against Cleveland. They could go 3-0 and in that stretch. And then all of a sudden, they're sitting there maybe as an 8-9 win team with, yes, a very workable back end of the schedule. Baltimore at uh, on the road against Baltimore, but then they host Washington. I think they'll be in the tank by then. They're, they host New Orleans, very winnable game against New Orleans. And then they wrap up the season at New York Giants at San Francisco. I think this Rams team is poised to win 10 games and get themselves the NFC West title. I am taking the Los Angeles Rams to win the NFC West. You heard it here first. All right. That means I'm taking the San Francisco 49ers to take a step back, win 10 games, 10-7, same record as the Rams, but I think the Rams will end up with you know tiebreakers and all that weird stuff. Uh, I'm giving the division to the Rams. Over the Niners. The Niners have the best roster in football. McCaffrey, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Kittle, Trent Williams, Joey Bosa, Eric Armstead, Fred Warner. But 
They lost to Miko Ryans. They have lost Robert Sala. They lost, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 what's his name, Mike, Mike uh, uh, McDaniel's uh, with the with the Dolphins. This is a coaching staff that has been bleeding talent for the last couple of years. I think that catches up with them a bit. They were unusually healthy last year for a Niners team than the previous couple of years have had injury bugs plague them. I don't know if they can stay healthy the whole year. And let's let's be real about Brock Purdy. Like, can we be real about Brock Purdy? And I think I, I, I owe it to you to be real about Brock Purdy. There's a reason why he was Mr. Irrelevant, right? There's a reason why he wasn't a first, second, third round draft pick. Okay? These NFL defensive coordinators, especially in his own division, Pete Carroll, Gannon, the re- defensive head coach in uh, in uh, Arizona, McVay, uh, and, and uh, the staff in, in Los Angeles. The, the, these guys watch tape, right? The, it, Brock Purdy took the league by storm last year. I mean, people, myself included, we wrote off the Niners after the Jimmy G injury. Wrote them off. And he they took the league by storm. A full offseason of film, a weaker offensive line for the Niners, an older off- uh, overall roster for the Niners, and I think some weird juju going into the season post-Trey Lance and uh, and knowing that they made some mistakes in their past. I and the Niners take a step back. They're really good still, but I don't think they are Super Bowl, Super Bowl good. I, I just don't see it with Brock Purdy, and and I'll be willing to eat crow at the end of the season if I'm wrong, and he passes for four thousand yards, thirty touchdowns, and leads this Niners team to a you know a twelve win season. They have a tough schedule. They start the season on the road at Pittsburgh, on the road at the Rams. And then they get a home game against a playoff team last year, an improved New York Giants team. Then it's workable. Arizona, Dallas, at Cleveland, at Minnesota. They get Cincinnati at home. A week nine bye, post bye at Jacksonville. A win against Tampa at home. But then they have to go to Seattle, to Philadelphia, home against Seattle. That's a tough stretch. They have to close out the season versus Baltimore and the Rams. Those games are at least at home for them. Tough but workable. I like the Niners. I just don't love the Niners. Seattle Seahawks, I have it 9-8, and finishing third in the division. Here's my problem with Seattle. Seattle is a team that last year absolutely caught the NFL world by storm. They caught the world by storm. Every single one of us a year ago right now was saying Seattle would be a three or four win team. They'd be in on drafting a quarterback and they'd be ready to move on. They'd be have Bryce Young and uh, they we restart their franchise with all those draft picks and a youth movement, right? And they did the opposite. And they shocked the world and they made the playoffs. They're not shocking anyone this year. Seattle is on everyone's radar this year. And again, Everyone now has film on what Seattle wants to do with Geno Smith. And Geno, late in the year, unwound a little bit. And there was some shaky, shaky play from Geno Smith. Let's not forget. He was very, very good last year. But this Seattle team, I like their running back room. I like their wide receiver room a ton. Um, A very okay offensive line. The defense has names, Mario Edwards Jr., Bobby Wagner, Jamal Adams. Uh, but I think this, this Seattle team will scrap and claw their way just like last year to the wins that they have. Um, it's a not, a, it's not an easy schedule. It's not an easy schedule. They have to go to Cincinnati. They have to go to Detroit. They have to go to the Giants. They have to go to Baltimore. They have to go um, to um, obviously San Francisco and LA in division. And so um, some of their home games against Philadelphia, against Pittsburgh, not the easiest break in the world for Seattle schedule wise. I think they'll be a very good team competing for the playoffs. I'll let you know in two weeks, whether they make the playoffs or not. Uh, but 
I think this is a team that uh, is. It feels like just like last year's team, only they're not catching anyone by surprise. And finally, I have the Arizona Cardinals four and thirteen, and I think that the Arizona Cardinals are a team that they would be best served by trying to lose as many games as humanly possible. This Arizona Cardinals team, I think, has already showed you with the Isaiah Simmons trade for a seventh round of the Giants. They clearly know that the best thing for their organization would be to be absolutely in the running for Caleb Williams. They have two draft picks in the first round next year. They absolutely should be in the running for Caleb Williams. Um, Their schedule early on allows them to get off to a poor start and then sit Kyler Murray and uh, health reasons and all that and allow it to get nasty. You know, obviously... In division, they have to go. They're, they're the worst team in their division, so they have, they have tough road games in division. I see them going possibly 0-6 in division. Uh, and they do have to still play Baltimore. They have to go uh, to Pittsburgh. Uh, they have to go to Chicago and Philadelphia late in the season. Uh, they, they have to start the season by hosting basically the NFC East uh, with New York and Dallas. I don't believe in the Cardinals. I don't believe in their rookie defensive head coach, Gannon. Shots, shots, deep balls, pew, 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 pew. I don't believe in him at all. And so I think the the Niners will be best served by going all in on the tank, trading Kyler Murray, drafting uh, their quarterback of the future, restarting their franchise with a ton of picks, ton of talent, and a new quarterback by the end of the year. So to recap... Everything I predicted today. I have the Chiefs winning the AFC West. I have the Rams winning the NFC West. I have the Chargers and the Niners absolutely battling in second place for the playoffs. I have the Chargers making the playoffs. And then I have Seattle and the Broncos. Very, very good NFL teams. They will have ups. They will have downs. They'll be right there in the mix for a wild card spot till the end of it. And then I have the Raiders probably being better than we think. And the Cardinals, they should be worse. And they should try to tank. The problem is schedule allows for them to win some games. And uh, they they do have some players. They have some talent. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 Marquise Brown, James Conner, Buda Baker. They have some guys. All right. When we come back, I'm going to give you my full thoughts on the Trey Lance trade everything that went down, his future, the Niners, what we should think of it, and what kind of pressure it puts on Dak Prescott. Live and local in America's News Talk 1070K, Tremont, the K, Tremont app. It's on the mark. Dog does not want to be petted. <laughs> Just a little heads up before something bad happens. Move your coffee cup away from your computer. Oh, no, 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 no. So you can have more control. Stop. You're texting your boss by mistake. Uh Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Warning. The cap is loose on that catch-up. Don't wait. You have the power to change the outcome. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. From the Salvation Army, welcome to Heartbeat. This past Sunday, I saw a little girl raising her hands while we were singing in church. While she was raising her hands, she was looking around to make sure that everyone else was still raising theirs. She was imitating her grandparents and looking for reassurance that she was doing it right. I wonder how many times you and I were so concerned with what everyone else was doing that we missed out on the opportunity to really worship God. Today, let's choose to be more responsive to God's leading in our lives than the fear of being judged by someone else. What God thinks of us is what really matters. For more episodes of Heartbeat, visit SalvationArmyRadio.org. 
If you came across a child struggling with hunger, how would you recognize them? By their clothes. Their age. Where they speak. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America. 200 food banks strong. Kick off your labor. The forecast from the News Talk 1070. KHMO Weather Center. Chance for scattered storms today. Otherwise overcast skies. Highs around 83. Winds out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. 63 tonight. Slight chance for scattered thunderstorms. High of 79 tomorrow. Right now, 73. Welcome on back to On the Mark here on News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. They are the buying center of the Tri-States. If you're selling, they're buying. Tell them Mark sent you. All right. So I, I wanted to m- lead my show with this for a while after the news broke last night, but then I, I cooled down. I thought to myself, realistically... This this doesn't matter as much as what I've been doing in my series of predicting the the teams and focusing on players who are actually going to really play this year. And Trey Lance, though, was traded from the 49ers to the Dallas Cowboys for a fourth-round pick last night. Uh, Adam Schefter reported that it comes after Wednesday. Apparently, Trey Lance asked for a trade, and the Niners, uh, to their credit, worked quickly to find him uh, a new home and getting a fourth round pick in return. And basically when you are at the lowest of the low with a quarterback is, I think, uh, you know, obviously it's embarrassing considering how much they gave up, but in the course of three days to get a fourth rounder back, um, I actually think that's fairly w- job well done. Here's what I'll say about the Trey Lance trade overall. Go back To April of 2021, that is two and a half years ago, the 49ers early on made a gigantic trade to go from like pick 15-ish all the way up to number three. And we all were sitting here going, oh my God, oh my God, it's going to be quarterbacks one, two, and three. So they gave up a haul, a ton when they had a Super Bowl caliber roster ready to win, they gave up a ton to go get what would be the third quarterback in a draft. And as the draft broke out, Trevor Lawrence won to the Jags, Zach Wilson two to the Jets. Realistically, now knowing that Zach Wilson has just been a disaster, they were saved from Zach Wilson. And remember so many of the pundits, the expert voices said, they're going to go get Mac Jones because all the Niners need is a younger, sturdier, healthier version of Jimmy G, and this team will win a Super Bowl. They go get Mac Jones. He's got a bigger arm. He's a bigger, sturdier, healthy Jimmy Garoppolo. He's a smart athlete, a smart decision maker who will fit in that Kyle Shanahan offense And this could be Tom Brady 2.0. And what did they do? And remember, we heard all the reports are that the coach wanted Mac Jones. That Shanahan wanted Mac Jones. And they go all in on a project quarterback. Which, at the time, felt like, okay, you're going into the 2021 season. Jimmy G is healthy. You can sit Trey Lance for a year. Make one more run with a very capable Jimmy G who got you to a Super Bowl the year before. When healthy, all right, let's go with it. What happens the 2021 season? Up and down, injuries. Trey Lance plays a little, but then they lose in an NFC title game to their uh, division rival, the Rams, who go on to win a Super Bowl. And then here we are a year ago, last summer, summer 2022. Remember what the headlines were. The Niners have locked Jimmy G out of the facility. They didn't even give him a playbook because they're trying to maximize his trade value. They're all in on Trey Lance. Those were the headlines one year ago. All in on Trey Lance, trading Jimmy Garoppolo, and and Trey Lance is the keys to the kingdom. They played the Bears in week one. Every, remember, everyone's saying, oh, the Niners are going to come out. They're going to crush the Bears Trey Lance better than Justin Fields. 
Can't wait to see Trey Lance explode in this Kyle Shanahan office, offense. Bears upset Niners week one. Trey Lance looked very shaky. Didn't look as good as Justin Fields. Trey Lance then gets injured by week three. And uh, he's out for the year. Broken ankle. You think, all right, well, they go to Jimmy G. Jimmy G gets the team rolling. People are now saying, oh, well, you know, we're going to go back with the Niners maybe being a Super Bowl contender with Jimmy G. He gets injured. We all write off the Niners for the year. I did. Brock Purdy comes out, has an incredible streak, and here we are. They've traded Trey Lance. This is a disaster for two reasons. One, shame on John Lynch, the general manager of the Niners, for not taking a roster at its peak and doing one of two things. Going and signing a veteran quarterback who's ready to win now. Go trade for Derek Carr. Go out and conv- and get Tom Brady when he was available. Go all in. Trade those first-round picks and go get Aaron Bleep and Rodgers. You have the best roster in football for four years in a row now. And instead of using those picks to go all in on a quarterback to win now, when Jimmy G, well, you did go and get Jimmy G and you made that move, that was good, but then he couldn't stay healthy, so you scratched that. And when you go up and you trade all those picks to get Trey Lance, you should have done one or two things. You should have just gotten dra- drafted Mac Jones. And now I get it, hindsight's twenty twenty. but if you're really desperate in getting a quarterback, use that trade capital. Go get someone who is established to win now with your roster right now, and you'd probably be sitting here with a ring. But you win it all in on a project, and now you're not even seeing the project through. You're throwing the project out. You're throwing it out. A year ago, Trey Lance all in. We were going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. And now, after a broken ankle, it's, no, 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 can't work with him, can't win with him, Sam Darnold, and we're trading him for a fourth-round pick. What? I, and I understand people being like, well, Mark, don't double down on the mistake. I get it. I like moving on from mistakes quickly. But you're an organization that drafted a project. Your job is to make that project better so he becomes a star quarterback. You failed on multiple aspects. Your job as an organization is to turn him from a project into a starter, Kyle Shanahan. And this is becoming a little bit, well, he doesn't fit with Kyle Shanahan's uh, system. Boo freaking who? If you draft a project and you can't turn him into a great, consisting starting quarterback with all the tools he has, that's a shame on you, San Francisco 49ers. That is a shame on you. They deserve a ton of criticism for this. A ton. People always say the Bears passed on Patrick Mahomes, traded up for Trubisky. All right, well, that's fair. They get criticized for that. You missed on a on a better talent, but the Bears at least saw Trubisky all the way through. They gave him the starts. They gave him the time to where they could know he wasn't the guy 100%. They went all in on him. The Niners never even went all in on Lance, and they never made it a priority to actually turn him into a starting quarterback. And now on the flip side, the Dallas Cowboys, oh my God, the Dallas Cowboys. You talk about pressure, Jerry Jones loves to talk. Cowboys, let's look at their schedule really quick, shall we? I've already talked about the Dallas Cowboys as being a team that I think is going to be borderline a playoff team. Man, oh man. You, you lose at the Giants to start. You, you, the Jets come to town. You lose that game to the Jets. You're 0-2. A sloppy game against Arizona on the road. If you maybe barely win that. And then you go and you host the Patriots and the Niners. Maybe you're 1-4 through first five games. Dak's not looking so good. It's a possibility. People are clamoring for Trey Lance. It's a possibility. It's going to be juicy. Also, now we can look back and say the Niners had the chance to add to their roster 
and just go with Jimmy G or get a healthy or, or go trade for quarterback. The, the picks after Trey Lance, Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, Panay Sewell, J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan, Devontae Smith, Justin Fields, Micah Parsons, Rashawn Slater, Mac Jones. Disaster. Absolute disaster for the San Francisco 49ers. Got to take a break. It's On the Mark, News Talk 1070, KHMO on the KHMO app. Hi, this is Jason Bucks. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. 1070 KHMO. Welcome on back to On the Mark News Talk 1070 KHMO on the KHMO app. Only got a couple minutes here left of the show. Brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai. They are the best of the number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the tri-state area. 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. Tell them Mark sent you. Ask them about that lifetime no-fear powertrain warranty on new and used vehicles. College football today. Today, I love this uh, college football starting the season in Ireland. This is fun. Notre Dame, Navy, all-time great. That's a fun, historic football matchup. Go Navy, beat Irish. I'm rooting for the boys who signed up to serve this country over the Catholics. Um, I, I will. T- I'm uh, Notre Dame is good, though. Look out for Notre Dame. They, they have a chance to really establish themselves early on a national TV audience in front of the the world stage is a is a possible sneaky can they sneak into the college football playoff type of team if they run the table and then tonight we get to watch the Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams defend his Heisman Trophy go for two in a row and uh, can he get USC to an undefeated record Lincoln Riley year two that defense has got to be better they take on San Jose State before I see you next Saturday. Two other important games in the college football world to keep an eye on. Number uh, 14, Utah hosts Florida. This is a great chance for, again, Utah to prove, hey, if we can run the table, stacking up wins against an SEC team like Florida, that matters. That really matters for Utah. And for Florida, can they uh, say, hey, we're back. We're we're a team to be messed with in the SEC. Go on the road and beat a very, very well-coached, very talented Utah team. And then we also get Nebraska, Minnesota. Minnesota, PJ Fleck, uh, you know, he's had some highs and lows this time in Minnesota. Be really nice to start off the season a win against a rival against uh, Nebraska. And a huge statement first game for Matt Rule back in college football. Can he turn around Nebraska? They've committed to him long term. Can he start off with a win against rival Minnesota? That'll be fun to watch. And then uh, finally, Shohei Otani injured. That's a bummer for everything. I, he's going to lose out on some money, big contract. Uh, will he continue to pitch? I think he should take the surgery and try to continue to pitch. That maximizes his value to a team. Maybe just become an all-time great closer or a relief pitcher. Enjoy this week in the college football. Enjoy the final week of preseason. I'll see you next week for an NFC and AFC North preview of On the Mark on News Talk 1070 KHMO. Get ready to rock 